Previously, I'm embarking on a fairly ambitious new project. I want to make something amazing, something that you'd be able to base a career on. But I'll need your help. I'm only just getting started. Could take six months to a year of development time, but it will be special and it will be community based. And it's going to be great. Hi, I'm back at work this week and I've been looking at a particular side issue to loop your masterpiece. You see, it's really important to me that Masterpiece as a you know, professional grade app works really nicely with the other tools that are part of your workflow, you know, other apps, other hardware. And to that end, it's really important that it will sync really robustly to other clocks and the other way around. But the problem on iOS right now is that sync really isn't very good. Now, there are a few reasons for that, but the the biggest one is that there's really no available standard implementation. So if you as an app developer want to add MIDI sync to your app, you've actually got to start from scratch. So the, the MIDI sync standard is actually quite simple and it's, it's very mature. In fact, it, it's so arcane that the only way to get a copy of the standard is printed on dead trees, but it's quite difficult to actually implement. So the, the way that it works is um, the sending app will send ticks at a particular interval. So the standard says you have 24 ticks per beat. So what you do is you take your BPM, your tempo, and you figure out what the interval between those ticks should be based on the tempo. So higher tempos will have shorter intervals and slower tempos will have longer intervals. So you send those ticks out at those regular intervals and then the receiver at the other end will take those and figure out again what the intervals were and then from there you can calculate the tempo. So it's quite easy to do but there are some complexities there that make the implementation quite difficult. So first of all, um, particularly when you're receiving from hardware, see iOS isn't a real-time operating system and neither is macOS for that matter. What that means is that you can't depend on getting messages at the exact time you're supposed to. They'll be offset by some jitter factor. Now that jitter is actually a source of error and the only way to deal with it is to basically take multiple samples and typically average them. So that's, that's one source of complexity. Uh, when you're sending from one app to another, uh, Apple have actually solved that issue with virtual MIDI, which is the technology that allows apps to send MIDI to each other. So with virtual MIDI, when you send a message, you include a time with that message, and that, that timestamp says when the message should be received. So that way, it doesn't actually matter when you actually get the message, because you can look at the timestamp and figure out when, um, what time interval that, that message corresponds to. So what it means is that, at least in theory, you can get absolutely perfectly accurate outgoing clocks when you're sending app to app. But the, the bad news is that very few apps actually do that. I did a quick survey of the apps that are running on my iPad yesterday, and it was only a few that did it at all. It was just a, a minority. So that's another uh, tricky part with the implementation. The other thing is that there's no commonality in workflow in, in the way that developers choose to present the MIDI functionality. So um, if you're used to iOS music apps, you'll probably notice that uh, setting up sync from one app to another is a bit of a minefield. It's hard to know exactly what is expected of you. So some apps will automatically send out MIDI ticks to every other app that they can see. Some apps will uh, do the opposite and will only uh, send to apps if the app at the other end connects to them and they won't offer any configuration at all. Some apps have a really big configuration and it's, it's quite difficult to understand. So there's no commonality there and it means that there's a lot of guesswork when you're trying to set up um, app communication. So given all of that, it's occurred to me that really the only way to make Loopy Masterpiece work really well with um, syncing is to try and fix this problem. So that's what I've been working on this week. I'm building a fully standards compliant, rock solid MIDI implementation, which I'm going to open source. So what I'm hoping is that will give a kind of standard implementation that developers of new and hopefully existing apps can just grab and put into their apps. They don't have to you know, think about how to actually implement the standard. They can just pop it in and it should just work beautifully. So, um, it's really important that this be um, dependable. So 
I've included a whole lot of unit testing in it. So unit testing is a really nice way to make software. Basically what you do is you set up a suite of tests that um, target particular areas of your code and then they're basically automated. You can just run all of your tests and you'll know immediately if there are any problems in your code. And when you make some changes to your code, you can run it again and make sure that you've not broken anything else. So it's fully unit tested and you know there's documentation and um, it also includes some sample code and a sample app, which I'm hoping will also, um, I'm going to release it for free on the App Store. And it should be able to be used as a diagnostic facility. You see, one of the difficulties right now is that if you've got a problem, it's very hard to tell where that problem comes from. So with this app, uh, apart from it being a kind of example of how to in, in, in implement this, this code, uh, it should give you an idea of where the problem comes from. So I'll, I'll show you what that app looks like now. And it looks like this. So it's just a pretty simple little metronome app. You can hit play and it'll go tick away. You can change the tempo. So that's what it looks like. And that's got these sources and destinations buttons here. So uh, this is definitely a work in progress, but just so that there's something you can see, uh, I've got a little Archeria beat step here. Um, and if we go into destinations and then set it as a destination there, if I hit play, you can see it, uh, it syncs there. And if I change the tempo, that updates. And we can go the other way. So if I just turn that off and then set it as a source, I can hit play here. And you can see it's syncing. And if we change the tempo like this, and it updates. So that's the sample app, which will be available for free on the App Store, but also the source code will be available as part of the distribution. So the developers can see it and see how it's implemented, and use it as a model for um, implementing this code into their own apps. So you'll notice that it's got this little error rating when you connect it to a source. So that tells you how robust the incoming clock signal is. So if you've got a problem with an existing setup, you can actually hook up this app as the destination and it'll tell you how good the clock is. So I'm hoping that will help in kind of diagnosing issues and figuring out um, if apps need a bit of work with their clock implementation or whether they're good to go. So this is still a work in progress, particularly we're still figuring out how to address the workflow stuff. We want to make this really dependable and simple, and maybe it'll include adding some supporting features to another app. No prizes for guessing which one. But if you'd like to stay informed of developments and we'll let you know when that's released, you can subscribe here at thespectacularsyncengine.com. We'll send you an email once we have news. Anyway, that's all from me this week. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you next week. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>